I have this new oven thermometer. You can tell it's an oven thermometer because it says oven thermometer here on the label. What this is all about is I did try to order an oven thermometer off AliExpress and they sent me this instead. And unfortunately, despite proof that what they had sent me was in fact a multimeter, they refused to refund me. So uh, it only cost about three francs. So I thought it would be interesting or at least amusing to just take a look at this and see how bad a three franc multimeter, or as the manual says, sunlight tester actually is. So what do you get? Well, it's a fairly shoddy analog multimeter with fixed probes that are actually commendably pointy. That glare is in a very annoying place. A nice big analog meter. This rotary dial selects functions. You've got a DC voltmeter. Don't know what that is. It says DC volts null, AC voltmeter off, a capacitance and resistance meter. Not quite sure how that works. I could always look up the manual, but I can't be bothered. The construction is a fairly shoddy single box held together by one screw. So let me just take the screw out. Well, not much. Though interestingly, the retaining strap, which should be here, was inside. That was very strange. In terms of actual components, the battery is supposed to go here. Battery does not appear to be present. I'm not very surprised as the battery is probably the single most valuable thing here, but that means that the capacitance and resistance meter wouldn't work. There is a fuse. If you use this on anything where the fuse might blow, you're in a world of pain. It says 5 amps, 250 volts. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. There is a single PCB held in by clips. Ah, that shows the meter motion. Is that actually showing up on camera? You can see the coil there. The meter might be possibly useful. This is the potentiometer for the for the resistance adjustment. And there is all the works of a analog multimeter. Not a lot really. The way it will work is that the switch element, this rotates, moving these copper contacts. The copper contacts will then bridge these circular tracks and close particular circuits. That will connect the probe's output here through a assortment of resistors to the meter itself. To measure current, it will just put the meter in series with this. To measure voltage, it will put a big resistor across these uh, and then measure the current through that resistor. So what is there here that we can actually salvage? Probably not very much. The most valuable bit is probably the box, which may make a reasonable project box. But let me just disconnect the power wires. Power for these meters is used by the capacitance and a resistance meter. Oh, sorry, those weren't the power wires. That was the meter itself. The power wires 
connect to here, I believe. Yeah, that, that three volt label. Hang on a second. This is connected to the lower terminal. If you notice these two terminals, the top one is labelled plus and the bottom one is labelled minus, and the red wire is connected to minus. So that frees up the PCB from the actual box itself. So let's just get that out of the way. So yeah, that is in fact the negative connection. You see it is labelled minus here in the battery compartment. But they have used a red wire instead of a black wire, which is very naughty. So if I'm actually going to use this again, I do not want that. So let's just take these wires off. And put them back on the other way round. having miscolored wires like that means that the next person to use this box is invariably going to hook the wires up the wrong way around and explode something. So let's take a look at this PCB. Well we've got a couple of resistors on the back, three, three in fact, and a few bits of wire, though I suspect that the most interesting bit is going to be the these probes, because they are actually commendably sharp it does say here 1,000 volts, but if you try to put 1,000 volts across these, then I think you deserve everything that's coming to you. So can I desolder these? Yeah, they are not actually fastened on very well. They are... Multi-strand copper, I think copper, they might, they might be something else like tin and aluminium, but they did desolder reasonably well, so I suspect they are actually thin and shoddy copper, but they will actually come in useful uh, I can easily put something like banana plugs on these and use them as oscilloscope probes. So that will come in a little bit handy. There's the potentiometer, which it says is a 10K either log or linear, I don't know. That will come off and go into a parts drawer. That came off far too easily. I don't think that was actually soldered down properly. You can actually see from these pads here that uh, the, cop the solder only goes part way around the pad. It's supposed to like cover it. So we have a pot. Fuse holder might come in handy. I think I've actually got a number of these, but these are actually sold down reasonably well. So these will be a pig to take off. Or not. I think that's very thin metal and is not actually soaking up much heat. Hmm. So what can I actually do with this? Well, the two interesting bits are the meter, which is like a perfectly serviceable, if very cheap, moving needle meter. With a commendably big screen, I have to say. And the and this switch. Now it would actually be fairly straightforward to 
isolate the various tracks here and use this as a selector switch. It's got a decent number of positions. It would just be a matter of either scratching off the track or more likely just removing and discarding some of these surface mount components which would then isolate the tracks. For example, this position here connects together these two pads and these two pads. So removing this here and then connecting a like ground to this would actually allow me to easily select various things. The obvious thing to do is just feed all these into a microcontroller. In terms of the inner and outer rings, the outer ring is just simple single positions. So I'm just looking at this where there is nothing. That's the off position, isn't it? Off is here. So the board must go in this way around. So in that position, none of these contacts are actually touching copper anywhere. For the inner tracks, we've actually got four pairs of contacts. So that's these two, these two, these two, and these two. So the inner two, right, the inner two is simple power on off. So the only position where they are not connected is in the off position. Right, in fact, it goes this way around. Okay, so you've got off on this side. So these things are actually connected down to the resistance section. So this ring has probably got to do with enabling the resistance meter circuitry. Interesting that there's a track here. Ah, right. It connects these two together. So this will be some kind of common track, uh, some common signal likewise here that is then connected to one of these other things. Now you notice there is in fact a connection across there. I would need to actually sit down and map all this, but I can imagine this being of use. The inner two rings can be used to, to power up a microcontroller. The outer two rings for selecting one of several GPIOs maybe. Although there's enough of these that wiring a GPIO up to each one would be a waste. You'd want to use some kind of port multiplier. Anyway, enough of that. What can we do with the meter? Ha! Drop proof, it says. I'm sure that this hard plastic thing is drop proof. In much the same way that Fabge eggs are drop proof. Let's take a look at this meter. This is a standard moving coil meter. It's part of a whole world of analog electronics that I'm not really very good at, but there's this moving coil here around a magnet. Current is induced in the coil, that causes torque against the magnet, the needle is fastened to the coil. Now, as far as I'm aware, these things measure current, not voltage, and they're also very delicate. So they measure small amounts of current, and if you put too much through it, the coil burns out and it's now useless. So I want a source of low current electricity to try this with, and it turns out multimeters are a very good source of this. In resistance mode, which I see this has been left on, I hope the battery hasn't gone flat, it will generate a current limited voltage that does seem to be working. 
and this is used to uh, it measures the voltage drop and that's used to measure the resistance whatever you connect it to so there we go you can see the coil move or less right so the tiny amount of current this thing is producing is getting most of a full deflection so I need to figure out how much that is. Here I have my real multimeter hooked up in series to this. So by connecting this one up, this by the way was my old multimeter before I went to this digital one, I see a current of about 40 microamps. That's not a lot. So if I wanna work the meter, from something that takes, say, five volts, I need to make sure that the current going through the meter at five volts doesn't go above about 50 microamps. So, time to do some maths. Simple resistive devices like this meter are governed by Ohm's law, which is V equals IR saying that the voltage dropped across the resistor is equal to the current times the resistance. We actually want to know the resistance given the voltage and the current. So if we write it like this, V I R in a triangle, this gives a really easy way to reform this into other things. We want to know the resistance, we have the voltage and the current so that is R equals V over I. So our voltage, target voltage is about five volts and our current is 50 microamps. So that should be a fairly simple division. Pulling out the calculator, it's five divided by 50E minus 6 is 100,000 ohms or 100K. So if we put a 100K resistor in series with the meter and then apply 5 volts across that, we should get a current of 50 microamps, which should be enough to move the needle. I've soldered on a 100K resistor in series with the meter from my stash and hooked it up to my bench power supply. It's currently set to 20 millivolts. Let's turn it on. Nothing happens, which is good. So let's crank the voltage up. Let's turn that up to, up. Oh, there it's moving. That's one volt. Okay, we, that, this means we're running roughly the right range, so. Two volts, three volts, four volts, five volts. Excellent. And we are seeing more or less full deflection. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Moving very slowly. Good. I'm quite relieved. I was a little worried that I'd get my maths wrong and burn the meter out. So that's great. The reason I've done this is it has occurs to me that this might actually make quite a nice little project box. We have the selector switch and we figured out that the PCB here can be used both as an on-off switch and to detect individual settings. And we have the meter, which works nicely at five volts. Inside, we've got a battery compartment for two AA batteries giving three volts. There's actually quite a lot of spare space. It's moderately thick. Uh, 
the meter here seems to be the highest part of it. There's in fact a special little meter lid here to protect the moving parts. But there's space here including these two little standoffs and space around here on which a PCB can be put, a small one. There's this thing here which was used for the, uh, the zero ohm calibration. This plugs into this pot that goes through from underneath and this could be very easily swapped out for a, uh, a shaft encoder thing. I've got one. There's plenty of space for putting more buttons on and so on. But it occurs to me that if I wanted to build a meter for something, this would be a very useful box for doing it on. For example, a Wi-Fi signal strength tester. Select the channel here and it displays it on the analog meter. I would want to change the label. This plastic lid should just clip on. Like so. And this reveals in a nice bit of detail the actual meter. You can see here's the needle attached to the coil. It's all very delicate. This thing here is used for adjusting the zero position. There's a thing here that drops a pin into that slot and you can then move it backwards and forwards and that will recalibrate the meter. I'm not going to fiddle with that. The label here is under this, so replacing it would be a little bit fraught because you end up having to remove part of the meter, which as I said is very delicate, but it would be easy enough just to stick a label on top here, obviously under the needle. So I think that this is going to go into a drawer in case I ever have a project that wants a meter. Does this actually go back on again? Yes, it does. Because I think this could be quite useful. If I can figure out how it all goes back together again, of course. That way up. And so I think I will keep my nice new oven thermometer. It will come in useful if ever I need a project that involves making a meter of some description, because it is a meter. It's got all the user interface bits. There's a decent amount of space inside. There's even this compartment here, which could be used to put more stuff in. I can imagine like a 3D printed thing that goes here with sockets in it. I don't know at all what I would actually do with it at this point, but it'll go into the parts box to come in useful at some point in the future. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this rather shambolic tour through the innards of a very cheap multimeter. I should add, this is essentially the same thing except slightly better made. It will be a single PCB meter adjustment pot probes. There's nothing particularly exotic about this. This could well have worked perfectly well as a cheap multimeter, but I've already got one and I have a much better, but still quite cheap multimeter. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. As always, please let me know what you think in the comments.